Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> welcome, you guys, to Thursday Talks at Hill Black Joy. Today, we're going to be talking about the best of 2021. 2021. This has been a ride. This has been a real ride, you guys. Um, it's been an awesome time. I'm Lola Troy, the host and curator of Heal Black Joy, the learning platform for our community to heal our black joy with tangible and attainable programs for the mind, body, soul relationship and businesses. And today's guest is going to be you guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I want to bring you in. We got some people that are going to join us later on and talk about all of the Thursday talks that we've done. So if we can, if you want to join in, just request and I'm going to pull you in. But I want to first start off by saying that thank you guys for I have so much gratitude in my heart because you guys have just completely showed up and showed out for me in this dream, in this passion project of mine to do Heal Black Joy. And I'm just so elated that I've got a group of people that not only believe in the mission, but believe in me and believe in what I'm trying to accomplish in healing black joy. My whole desire and passion about healing black joy was to not be the person that shows and polarizes what we already see every single day. We see enough killings. We see enough things that don't bring us joy. And I wanted to be a part of that solution. So thank you guys for riding with me. I see one of my special guests is already in. And I'm going to ask him to join who we did two lives with this guy. And hopefully, let me see if I can get him in here. Hey there, sir. Hey. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Sorry, I've been running around today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Damian McGee, our resident boundaries coach. <laughs> give it up, give light. it up, give it up. <laughs> How you been? How you feeling? I've been good, man. I cannot complain. I've been good. Um good, good. I know you see me like repost everything that you're doing. I'm no, posting I on TikTok. People are like, who is this guy? <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I love you. You going viral, man? You going viral? Wait, hey, I'm you going viral? I'm just alone for the ride. <laughs> hey, man, it's been it's been a crazy, crazy week. Yes. So we talked about boundaries, you know, boundaries that we have to have within ourselves and boundaries for others. And oh my God, he's frozen. Let's see if I can get him back. <clears throat> There you go. Oh, we talked wow. about yeah. we talked about boundaries within ourselves, boundaries that we have for others, and we talked about boundaries and specifically with black men. Mm -hmm. And you gave us so many nuggets. There was one thing that you said about, and you know I always go back to it because it's my favorite. It was my favorite quotable that you had, and it yeah. was us not knowing the difference between relationship and allegiance. Absolutely. Can you talk to us about that again? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, you know, I feel very strongly about it. It's, it's just this idea that, that um, instead of evaluating situations and people based on the healthiness of the relationship or the, or the interaction, uh, we just focus on what we believe required to, to, to you know, where we grew up, I'm sorry, family, uh, friends, the people. Um, but you're just, breaking up. Oh, for it's some reason, you're breaking up. Let me see. This is better. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. So no, I was just saying it, it just becomes it just becomes this thing where we where we continue to form allegiance with, with things and people and relationships and our environments 
while not focusing on number one, what do we want? What are we trying to accomplish? And two, you know, are these things healthy for us? Are they serving us? Are they giving us something back? And it just, I, I can't tell you how often you see the negative impact of that uh, if people don't take the time to reevaluate. Right, right. And, and we need, how often do you think we need to reevaluate? You know, I, I used to do this thing called the uh, the annual Facebook purge. And so every, uh, every, every December, I would go through my friends list. That's before I wanted to be in business. So I would just go through my friends list and be like, I don't talk to them. I don't know them. Whatever. Right. Um, you know, so I would say, I would say annually is, is not the worst thing in the world. And I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, you we we spend so much time you know this time of year doing so many things people are setting resolutions and they're they're trying to make plans for their next year and 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 and, you know think about what they didn't do this year and what they want to do next year but how much Mm -hmm. time do we spend sitting around and asking ourselves you know do i have the right people around me do i have the people around me to support these these things that i want to accomplish have i set the right expectations or the right boundaries with the people who are going to remain in my life so that I can move towards the things that I want to accomplish and and quickly identify if those people are along, you know, just for the ride or if they're there to support or, or God forbid, if they're working against me, you know, and I, I think those are, those are real conversations we need to have with ourselves and with the people in our lives and on a regular basis. Yeah. I can't I can't tell you how transformative that conversation was because I think our group of people we don't know boundaries like we weren't really taught boundaries but it's good to know that there are people like you out there that are showing us that is one not it's okay to have boundaries to set them and stick to them and reevaluate them when we're supposed to reevaluate them yeah, and I think most importantly, you know, what I'm what I'm really trying to get people to, especially our people, is set the boundaries first, right? Decide what you want and then set the boundaries around that. What a lot of people in our community do and what a lot of adults do is they they come out of bad situations, they come out of traumatic situations, they come out of bad relationships. Now all of a sudden they have all these rules. You know, the next guy won't do this and the next girl won't have that. It's like, well, that's setting a boundary or an expectation off of pain or or as a protective measure mm. is not the same as setting a boundary to ensure that you create guardrails for where you want to go. Those are two very different things. And so yeah. I think it's much more productive for people to set them initially and only focus on where they want to go, not trying to focus on, you know, how do I prevent the next person from doing that bad thing that the last person did? Right. Right. I I thank you so much, man, for, uh, for just being a part of what we're trying to accomplish here at Heal Black Joy. Thank you for contributing. Um, I don't know what else to say. We got to do it again. That's all I can say. Let's let's. Hey. Cheers to 2022. Uh, I wish you nothing but blessings, much success, much abundance in 2022. And thank you again for sharing your platform with ours. And we will do it again in 2022. Absolutely. Keep up the good work. You're doing amazing. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for being a, for letting me be a part of, of the journey. And to everybody else who's been on here, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but I, I think we can all say that you're doing amazing work. And it's just an honor to be a part of it. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. All right. Same to you, man. All right. I just went in to see if I can invite another person in. Let's see if he can join. One of our other wonderful coaches that we had. Larry, I just sent you an invite. Let's see if I can get you in here. So listen before you say a word. (laughs) I've already said that I'm down and out. 
but I'm going to jump on for a few minutes just because you allowed me to be on this platform initially. Man, I already, I already know. I already know. I am so grateful to have met you <clears throat> and to have had the conversations that we've had. You guys, if you weren't in on our conversation, we talked about healthy communications in relationships. And one thing that I've noticed, and I've noticed this not only on Instagram, but I've noticed it on TikTok, black men and black women, we're having some difficulties. We need to bridge the gap between our communication. I don't want to say difficulty. I don't want to, I don't want to put that word out there. I want to change my language. That's what I'm going to be working on in 22 is changing the language. I want to speak what I want to see. So we just need to bridge the gap of what we're saying to one another and how we're saying it. And you were so instrumental in showing us and telling us. You got me together a couple of times in our life. <laughs> and made me realize some things. No, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for someone getting me together because that's showing me that I need to evolve. I need to grow as a woman. And <clears throat> if I want to be a successful woman and I want to have a successful relationship, why not listen to someone who is a relationship coach, who is also a man, who also coaches men and women in relationships, right? <laughs> so I, I thank you for, I thank you. yeah, I thank you for your expertise, man. I thank you for your contribution to what we've done here at Hill Black Joy. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate the opportunity that you've given me. Um, and, you know, my, my goal is just to not have a whole lot of folks deal with what I dealt with, go through the things that I went through. And it was due to ignorance. It was due to ignorance. It was due to not having someone who could talk to talk um, and not be afraid to do so, um, who would allow me to ask the questions that needed to be asked or um, even show me that I had the answer and just didn't know the question and how to put it together. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so what are you working on? What are you working on? Tell um, me what you're working on. Reformatting, uh, reformatting the platform that I have, um, trying to really figure out how to get the brothers to come together and just talk, talk, talk. Um, I think in one sense, a lot of men are taking it too personal and not understanding that their personal life is all of our lives. It, we all are going through the same things. So I right. don't have to take it on as it's just me and I need to hide. You know, I, I, I don't I don't I don't know how to really break that, but a good brother of mine reached out to me today and he said the way you get the way you break that cycle of them not uh chiming in is you keep going and eventually they're gonna do it. Yeah. They, they're gonna have to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's so key. Um Thank you for for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, sure. The majority of the people in Hill Black Joy, I mean, we do have some men in our group. <laughs> and I, I was so happy to do the, the Ode to Black Men. And I was not only happy to do it, but it brought on a lot of Hill Black Joy tribe members that are men. And just the information that was shared in our conversation, they've gone back and watched some of that stuff. And that, you know, we're all, we've all been convicted because we definitely need to work on how we communicate with one another. Yes. So I yeah. thank you again. Yeah. I'm grateful for our connection. I got to thank, shout out Sarah for connecting us. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I wish you nothing but abundant blessings, you and yours in 2022. And let's just keep it going. Let's keep the wave going and let's do it again. Absolutely. All you said to me, back to you 10 times. And, you know, everyone, please, especially my brothers, sisters, no, no slack, slight to you all, but brothers, I need y'all to jump on and get out here and let's talk, talk, talk. And let's get this thing together. Peace and blessings, everyone. I'm going Absolutely. back to my favorite band. I know. And, and, and may you get better, man. May you get Thank better. You. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Bye. -bye. Bye. They just jumping on. Look at these people jumping on. Look at these people. Come on, we got to do our dance.
if you don't know who this beauty is, ladies and gents, this beauty right here, she comes on the live dancing. She's the only speaker that I've had this year that danced. She is the epitome of heel black joy. Miss Shauna L. Howard, how are you, my dear? Hello, my sister. Hello. Look at this energy. I need y'all to share, share, share this out. Share this out because her energy is everything. Everything. She just turned it up three notches already. <laughs> I am so honored to be here. I'm just going to like put aside five o'clock every Thursday <laughs> as our time, okay? And, right. Yeah, I just, I love it. I love it. You are honestly like one of the best things that I, not best things, but one of the biggest joys of 2021. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. You are too, to me, for real. Mm -hmm. um, when I started Hill Black Joy, you were the person that I had in mind. Like when when the download came, it was about it was specifically about black women because my passion is black women. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I realized that our joy is not just contained with us. Our our black joy is for men and women, for boy and girl, for babies. It's about the joy of black people as a collective. And so we can't have one without the other, right? Yeah. So um, I realized that as I, you know how you, God will give you a download and then he just blows it completely out the water and you're like, wait a minute, God, I didn't, wait, wait, hold up. <laughs> Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit. Wait, 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that being said, you have been our guest twice as well. We did it one week. It was so good. You came back the next week. And then you guys, we went viral on TikTok. It's up. Our video is up almost 12,000 views on TikTok. Congratulations. That's Congratulations. You. That's you. No, it's what you poured into us on this live. It was you being honest, authentic, relatable, and sheer joy. And it came across the page. And then I took the clip and I put it on TikTok. And there were so many people that related to it. It's got over 300 some comments right now. People are going back and forth you know, debating on what it was about. And I'm like, you guys have to watch the full context of the conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because people could take a clip, you know, for yeah. clickbait. Yeah. Of course, I got the, the, the best relatable clip to put on there for people to see it. But I wanted to entice them with a little bit so they could come over, you know, and, and, and watch the entire conversation. So if you guys haven't seen the conversation, go into our IGTV section and watch both of the conversations. She did Heal Black Joy through difficult times and Heal Black Joy through exercise. I want to talk to you about exercise particularly because, you know, at the top of the year, people always say, I'm going to lose weight, right? But they don't have any plan of action behind it. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go and roll at a gym. And I'm just going to go to the gym. And then by January 22nd, which is my birthday, they already over it, unmotivated, not trying to do it. And at the Krispy Kreme that Friday night, eating ice cream and, and donuts. So. Wait, wait. Krispy Kreme sells ice cream? Wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh. I, I added the ice cream. So you get the Krispy Kreme donuts and then you go somewhere else to get the ice don't cream. Get, don't get me excited, okay? There is a Krispy Kreme right down the block here. <laughs> And I'm gonna go there and be like, listen, y'all see me enough, okay? How come you didn't tell me there was ice cream here as well, okay? So don't get, so, you, about to get you was about to get some people cussed out, okay? I'm just letting you know. Uh -uh. No, no, no. Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme doesn't sell. Okay. Ice cream's not on their menu. Bless you. Bless you. But you know what I'm saying? It's just the, uh, it's just the, uh, how people will literally start spiraling out. Sure. So first is, sure. I'm gonna get a donut sure. or I'm gonna get a donut hole and then I'm gonna get 
the whole, you know, dozen, and then I'm gonna go down the street and get some ice cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Been, Been there, there done that. Done that. Do that tonight. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, talk to us about your mindset. You had a mindset shift during mm -hmm. COVID mm -hmm. that changed how you saw exercise. Right. Yeah. Talk yeah. to us about that. So, the mindset isn't so much about accomplishing a goal. It was about changing a lifestyle. It was about changing a habit. It was about removing <laughs> negative things, mindset, behaviors, habits, what have you, from my life and replacing them with things that are healthy. So during the quarantine, um, I lived in a space that I realized after exercising was, just wasn't healthy for me. Actually, before I go into that, I will say that a lot of times losing weight is not so much about um, getting the gym membership, getting the new outfit, getting the, the workout buddies and, and things like that. A lot of times getting healthier, it means that you have to lose weight, meaning other people out of your life. Mm. You, have change, you have to change a lot whenever you want to make um, <coughs> exercise or make um, losing weight a goal. For me, I, I've never been the type of person that's like, I want to lose 30 pounds, and when I lose 30 pounds, and I'll meet my husband, and then I'll live happily ever after. I don't assign numbers to things. Right. I've never been one to care about how much I weigh. Um, I never really, like, my age doesn't really matter to me that much in terms right. of, like, what I think I can do with my life. Um, right. The numbers of my life don't really matter for, for me. What matters for me is the behaviors, the changes, the, the how can I be effective to society, to my family, to my friends? How can I be the best version of myself, not selfishly just for me, but for this planet that I have been put on? And so right. because I, I don't look at the micro, I, I look at it from the macro or the big I don't know I look at the bigger goal okay right <laughs> and right I tackled the bigger goal so again it's not like oh I want to lose 70 pounds which is what I lost last year it was how do I start exercising more mm. so for me exercising is fine and cool and all but I'm a people person you know I'm, I'm a person that likes to, that enjoys being around people I have boundaries around it but I I enjoy being around people um I'm probably more suited to play a sport than I am to go to the gym every day. So the right. moment that I got a bike and the moment that I bought my own bicycle and went out and met other people and connected with other friends who rode bikes, I realized that I was, I was moving my body a lot, not because I put in my mind that I want to do 20 miles a day and I want to do those 20 miles under two hours or whatever. Right. It was just more mm -hmm. like, how many days am I going to go out riding my bike with my friends or with my new friends? So it became about being social to me. And I'm just yap, yap, yapping along, talking to whoever will talk to me, singing along my bike, however. And the next thing you know, I've ridden 30 miles. Yeah. You do that three, four, five days a week, and your waistline is going gonna, is gonna to smooth out. It will. Right. And the right. more I got to, the more I realized how, how, beneficial cycling was <clears throat> i wasn't thinking about like oh what's my blood pressure or what's this what's that thankfully you know i'm i'm grateful that i don't have any major health concerns but i wasn't thinking about the bigger i mean i, I wasn't thinking about the smaller goals i was thinking like how can i ride my bike safely either by myself or with a group of people because i like how i feel when i'm mm. doing this i like that i'm happy I like that I feel good. I like that I'm chasing good looking men around Los Angeles. Like, I, this is great. This is who, who do I owe a, a, a drink to? This is, this is wonderful. My girlfriend said good old playtime. Like, I'm just good old playtime. All it was for me. And the more I played, the more I went out and prioritized playing prioritize playing the sport prioritize my health prioritize 
fitness, if you want to call it. I mean, in my mind, it was, okay, my playtime. But for others, it's called exercising. Or for others, it's called uh, fitness or whatever a case may be. Whatever it is that you want to call it when your body is sweating. Prioritize that. I'm glad you said that, playtime, because I was telling... <clears throat> I was telling Larry, who was just on, that I wanted to change my language. That was one thing that I wanted to work on in 2022, is changing the way that I speak. And so for me, prioritizing clay or prioritizing pleasure for me sounds better to me yeah. than prioritizing exercise. Oh God, I don't like exercising. I don't like, I have a gym membership, but they owe me some money for the amount of months that I've not gone there. <laughs> really? Come on. But I can tell you every day I wake up hoping, wishing, trying to move stuff around in my calendar so that I can ride my bike at least 50 miles. 50, at least 50 miles. I'm not even driving my car 50 miles a day. And I, I want the lifestyle where I can get up in the morning, go for at minimum a 35 mile bike ride, come back home, teach America's children how to sing, teach every adult that wants to book me how to sing, sell my designs, be a philanthropist, get some good old orgasms in every once in a while, and then just do, and then just live. That part. Donate to, donate to causes and charities that I believe in. Go on vacation. Like, that, that's, I want to do that so badly. And so I had to look at it as a sport that I play. And cycling is, happens to be one of, those, one of those sports where all you really need is a bike. You don't have to, you know, book a basketball court or, you know, go to the football field or nothing like that. All you really need is a bike. And once you get a bike, which anybody can get a used bike, as long as you got a great bike mechanic, it's just it's it's just a matter of time before you start seeing your your holistic health change. And honey, when I saw that in my life, I was like, I'm never going back to being inactive. Right. Right. I'm not. I can't do it. It's just it, I know who that Shauna is, and I don't I don't want to know her anymore. I want to yeah. know a different Shauna. And the Shauna that I love right now, the Shauna that I love right now works out regularly. She moves her body on a regular basis. You want to get to know yourself differently. That's so good. Yes, yes. And you can't That's be so afraid good. of that. You can't be afraid of getting to know yourself. That I mean, there are things that this world can give. If you think about your biggest dream that you have for yourself and then and then recognize that there are eight billion people in this world and that while you're unique and special and your dna is no is is different from anyone like the human experience for everyone on this planet can be from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high in any sort of value system Right. You can have the you can have the biggest family in the world that loves you dearly. You don't have to lift a finger and not have a penny in the bank. Or you can have maximum health and wellness, but not have any friends, any loved ones. There's so many different ways of being a human being. There's so many different ways of being a human being. Why not be a happy, healthy, and holistically well human being? And that, really? that's the yeah. mindset that I have as it pertains to black women. I'm like, listen, if there is any group of people in this on this earth that should experience, that should have the the the, the permission to live with ease, flow, luxury, and pleasure, you know, I say them four things all the time. Mm -hmm. It is black women. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I. I say that to you, you know, we talk about this all the time. I say it to you. I say it to a lot of my friends and family. I say that because I want to normalize health. I want to normalize wellness. And that's why I'm grateful that I met you because you have the mission, the vision, and the blueprint, and the motivation to 
want to do the same thing. So I'm so glad that we connected. <laughs> I am. I really, I'm, really I'm so appreciate. I'm super uh glad that we reconnected and it was by it was by design and it was divine. It was a Absolutely. divine design. Um thank you for your contribution to what to our show. Uh thank you to your contribution to my life. Thank you for those conversations that we've had. Um I wish you nothing but abundant abundance in ease flow luxury and pleasure in 2022 yes. same to you same to you all right it was so good talking to you bye bye girl <laughs>
And it's gonna happen because it is possible. And not only is it important for us to take our rest, our self-care um, as the utmost importance, but it's important for us to take our dreams seriously. I have to look in the mirror and ask myself, why am I not living the life that I so desire? And I learned something. I've been programmed to want. Ooh! Just want. You know, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? That be Language. Nice? It's that language. It's the language. I wish we just been talking about this. It is nice. It is nice to wake up in a hotel every day. It is nice to travel. It is nice. And we have to shift from wanting to knowing that you have it. Yes. To knowing that it is yours. If the desire is within you, it is yours. When yes. it came into you, it is yours. You yes. know, I recently had a client that I was working with and I messed up the dates on the contract and they called me and they said, no problem, we'll start next week. And it quickly reminded me, what is for me is for me. No one's going to take it. No one's going to touch it. I can't mess it up. I can't drop the ball. I can't lose it. It's not going to go anywhere. So I just want to encourage those of you who are listening to change, reprogram, go after what you want. I know that it sounds like a pipe dream, but let's shift ourselves from, wouldn't that be nice? How about that? You know, that, that must be nice to, I enjoy experiencing this. This is what I do on a, daily, on a daily basis. So if we can change our language, change our mindset from expectation, from skepticism, skepticism, that is such a natural thing for us to be skeptic, um, to expectation, you'll start to see more things happen for you. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I keep the, the word like changing your language <clears throat> is big. That's what's been ruminating in my head today. Not only for me, but for the people that I talk to, it's like we, we don't have an expectation. We don't feel like we're worthy. I see two of my girlfriends on and I want to talk to her about this particularly because she talked about it in our live when we were talking about mother wounds. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you, thank you for dreaming and thinking and being crazy enough to jump on live with me yeah. and supporting what I do as well as me supporting what you do. It's good. You guys, it is so imperative to have your good, good girlfriends that is not jealous of you, that want to see you win and celebrate you and, wanna, and want the best for you just like they want the best for themselves. And that's how we are. That is how we are. I celebrate her in everything that she does. She celebrates me in everything that I do. And she's just crazy enough to go there with me. If I call her and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing such, do it. Do it. <laughs> and then I'm like, are you sure I need to do this? Go ahead and do it. Yeah, because so, if you no, win, no, no. I win, and we win together. Like absolutely, on, absolutely. You win the absolutely, absolutely. We go it up in twenty twenty two. That's what and we doing. And staying up. Thank you, thank you love for your expertise. I love you. Bye, Peace for doing. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, 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 oh. I see so many people have joined. Let me see if I can get this person in. You guys. I don't know if you guys saw our live and we were talking about mother wounds. When I tell you this lady right here, Miss Jennifer Anise. Listen, you got me up here in my uh, lay around clothes with no lip gloss or nothing. And, it's, and, and, you, and you are fabulous. Let me listen. With your me. blonde hair. I love it. And your glasses. I love it. Thank you. Let me put a little glisten on my lips. Put a little glisten. Hey, hey you know, dog. I, I was like, I'm tired. I'm trying. I'm, I'm not working and working and trying to get things done but i was like you know for me something i want more of my in my life is community mm. and and when i read my dms i was like 
I'm busy. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not that damn busy. Why is this other bitch that damn important? Let me hop on here. Because you are a genuine person. You are a genuine sister. And I love, have loved getting to know you even through Instagram. So here I am. Only for you. Oh, my God. You know that, that warms my heart because I would say... There were a few conversations that I had. Now, granted, all the conversations that we've had thus far have been transformative. But yours in particular, the mother wounds conversation was so transformative because so many of us are dealing with mother wounds. Are not dealing with mother wounds. We have them, but we're not dealing with them. And so I was getting messages like, did she just say... You guys, if you haven't saw, see, have you if you haven't seen the the mother wounds conversation, you got to go back to our IGTV section because you said something. I said we're not really self aware, and you said something that was so quotable. I was like, oh my god, did she just say that? You said, how can you be self aware when you're in survival mode? I will never forget you saying that. You listen, and, and I was reading a meme this week, and they were like. Basically, you can't be self-aware when you're disconnected from yourself. So how can you be aware of something that you don't possess? Mm. There's nothing to be aware of. And I was like, ooh, ooh, you know, and that's really what it is about. It isn't about, you know, if you're a service provider, if you're a coach, if you're a content creator, if you're selling your services, so much of it is about, you know, make a thousand dollars a day, you know, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, uh, get your boyfriend before Christmas. Like all of these things that we're looking for that we think will make us happy. And I'm not I'm not saying you shouldn't that you should go without any of those things because I want them all myself. But owning yourself belonging to yourself, having authority and possession of yourself not only makes it possible to authentically have those things it makes it so you can really enjoy them because some of the things we already have but we don't even know that we already living in the promised land because we're so disconnected from who we are and so this work isn't it is a it is inner work it is soul work and you have to be on that path to really understand the value of it because there you know, it's not like a mother wound is a niche. All <laughs> black women have a mother wound. And it doesn't mean you don't like your mother or you have a bad relationship with her. It means that by the nature of her gender and race, she didn't have autonomy. So she couldn't teach you how to have autonomy. And there are varying degrees of that. And some of us, some of us weaponize our lack of autonomy. And we want to stay in that space because we think it's safe. Some of us want to ignore it, and then there are others of us who who really want to be free. Because the, the, the sister who talked before you, I don't have anything to say because she said everything. Listen. She said everything. I'm like, I, I'm listening to her. I'm like, oh, listen, I, don't even, I don't know what we're going to talk about because she said everything. Y'all need to listen to what she said. Every conversation on this live has been about empowering us, empowering our people. Right. And <clears throat> That mother wound conversation was so transformative. You guys, it was so transformative. People were being triggered in the moment, in real time, to the point where Jennifer had to stop what she was saying, and we had to literally breathe through it. This is how so connected not only she is to her work, but this is how connected she is to herself and how connected she is to the spirit of others. So my sister, I love you. I thank you for contributing to my passion, which is helping us heal black joy. Whatever it is that I can do for you, do not hesitate to call. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. 
because we are a part of a collective and we're going to we're going to get this done. We're going to help heal people in 2022. That is our goal. That's yes. my goal. And I know that's your goal and you do it so well. Thank you. Yeah, I will definitely be calling you. You know, I've got some projects brewing for the new year. So I will be enlisting you in that most definitely because we do need each other. Absolutely. We do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. And now you can go back to your family's rest. Okay. Yeah. Happy New Year. Love Happy you. Happy New Year. Love you too, babe. Okay, bye. Bye. Let me see if I can get this other person on. I close out. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can get her on. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. Let's see if I can get another person on. I'm trying to see what's going on here. Oh, <laughs> hey, mama. I was not expecting that that fast. <laughs> I was writing something down and I said, oh, she, oh, I looked up and there I was. Okay. Hey, How Dr. Tori. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm good. You guys, this is Dr. Tori J. And <clears throat> she was a part of my Ode to Black Men Month. If you haven't watched this live, Lord, go back and watch it. <laughs> Lord, she is the number one reunification expert in the country. She, her passion is reuniting men with their children and she spoke and told us her own personal story and <clears throat> the mother will it's so funny that you are right after yes this. i should have known i was coming next yes I was in like, that I I ideal, <laughs> because i already know this is divine you're coming up right after the mother wound conversation because you spoke about not only the mother wound, but how men are having a, a mother wound. They have a mother wound. And because of that mother wound, they are still emotionally children, emotional children. They're still stuck wherever, if, if their father left them, and they're part of the fatherless generation, you said something that was so crazy. You said the reason why men cannot commit to you is because he was committed to his mother when he was five. I almost threw the whole entire show on the floor. I was like, what? Because we have to recognize that when daddies leave, what do moms do? You're now the man of the house. Well, what that means is not only are you the man of the house, but you're her man too. And then she develops her children, her men, her boys into the man that she wanted. And so then we're trying to date them in their adult in our adult life. And they become men, you know, in these male bodies, but they process like a woman because that's what mothers are doing. They think they can raise a boy into a man, but they're just raising a male body in the, into a female version of themselves. So when they process, like I hear women say all the time, he want to be the girl in the relationship. He want me to pursue him. Yeah, there's a reason. Because he got that from his mother who raised him in this male body, but yet he processes like her. He processes and wants to be the one who is uh, pursued. He processes and wants to be the catch and the prize. He processes from an emotional place, and he has all this anger. I, I tagged you in a post that I did with the men's group that I have where we, we were coaching. And so a therapist that is one of my um, one of my clients is his therapist and we work in tandem to get him what he needs. And we decided to start working with him on what's the issue with vengeance and payback. And remember, I asked him, I said, who was the first, not just woman, but person who stole from you, who hurt you, who traumatized you that you wanted to pay back? And every man in that room said, my mother. 
So ladies, you want to know why he's playing games with you or why he's treating you badly? <laughs> because he really wants to do that to his mother because he has a mother wound. He has a mother wound. I learned on tour in 2019, those who have a father wound and who have daddy issues have mommy issues too. And she even said, how can, that's what I was writing down. How can you be self-aware when you're disconnected from yourself? I've been saying that about my husband for the last two weeks. He couldn't connect to me like I needed because he's not connected to himself. But we're mm. expecting something from men that they don't even have. They had to live disconnected, Lola. That was how they survived. That was how they made it through their childhood. And yes, that's what I'm going to always... I'm going to always ask you your relationship age. I'm, I'm putting some stuff together to put on my page this week, come right out the new year. What's your relationship age? We're going to talk about that. You, you, you said that in our live, when you spoke about the fatherless generation, you said it's very important to know your emotional age. And I remember one of our Hill Black Joy tribe members who was a male, um, and I'm not going to reveal his name, but awesome, awesome, awesome guy. And he said in that live, that his emotional age was five. He was having some some realizations and some downloads in that live. And I asked him on live, I was like, how do you know that it was five? What happened to you when you were five? And he said, that was when I found out that my father left. And he we get just, stuck. He got stuck. He got stuck. And so many of us are stuck. It's not just men, you guys. We as women are stuck. And having this conversation with Dr. Tory made me realize that there we are toxic as women. We are very toxic. I know I, I noticed in our Ode to Black Men, the month that I did that, I did a grief conversation with a gentleman that was awesome. I did a mental health conversation that was awesome. I did the fatherless generation con con conversation with you. And there was some continuity in what you guys were saying and one of the things that was said was that we as women don't create a safe space for men to be able to speak we don't create a safe space for them to feel like their presence matters we don't create a safe space for them to feel like they can come to us with their deepest darkest secrets and yeah i don't want to yeah. point the finger like but they're not showing up for us and you they're not doing this and they're not doing that we get nowhere that is that is counterproductive for you to point the finger my grandfather always used to say to me that if you're pointing a finger at somebody you're pointing three back at yourself so we've got to take accountability for our part in what we're doing wrong when it comes to the communication between men and women between mother and father between sister and sister, brother and brother, sister and brother, mother to child, child to mother, child to father. We got to take ownership of what we need to work on, the things that we need to do. Because guess what? You can only change yourself. You can't change anybody else. And that's what we keep doing. Fatherlessness has been solely on the backs of men. When it's really not... We've got to deal with the fact that it's probably 50 50 will be coming. will be coming. But you can't put 100% of fatherlessness on men when we as women are doing some things too. We are withholding the children. We are dictating when he can get them and when you can see them. And, I, and I'm feeling emotional. We are. You've got to admit that we're doing it. And then in raising boys, you've got to realize we're raising these boys and they're going to date some place and we're mad at them. We're mad at their father for raising them. A toxic environment wanting to be better and different. It's not going to happen. I heard a woman say, "You want a man, but have you have you really looked at what kind of man you raise? Have you really looked at the kind of man you raise? But you want one, but you raise one. Woo! Look, that's like my edge is back <laughs> because hey, what you said earlier about you know the man of the house." I'm the man of the house, and I've been in a committed relationship with my mother, responsible, accountable, all of that, and I become an adult, I feel freedom. And now you want me to do that with you? Now you want me to lie down with you? How do I do that when I just got my freedom? 
I've been taking care of my brothers and sisters my entire life. I've been her boyfriend and her emotional dumping ground. How do I do that? And I'm not saying men are off the hook. Men need a lot of tools to, to, to come to the table. They need a lot of help. We got to be able to provide that. And we haven't done a good job at providing them what they need. We've done an awesome job of giving women all of the leverage they need and then using men as a scapegoat, but not giving them everything that they need and tools. I'm never going to be like my mother. I'm never going to be like my father. And then you grow up and you repeat the same patterns. Why? Because you were not given the tools on how not to be that. Right. You only, you only emulate what you see. You got to give men and even younger children, raising them into boys, into men, and girls into women. You got to give them the tools not to repeat the patterns. Right. Right. We're bigger than baby mamas and baby dads. We We're are. bigger than the boys. We're bigger than. Them. <clears throat> and we deserve family. It, it's about the collective. We deserve family. It is. We had families, and and somewhere along the line, the family dynamic got destroyed with us. And I love to see black love, you know, being portrayed on social media. It it warms my heart to see it. And I want to be a part of the polarization of that, not just just the relationships, but us having these conversations as sisters. The fact that I can get on with five of my beautiful sisters and talk shop. And it just be nothing but sheer glory. And then I can get on with my brothers and do the same thing. And not only that, we are all servicing our people. And we are all trying to make black joy a thing and, and play an integral part in that. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I want to thank you for being a part of our tribe, for bringing your expertise over to my platform um you are doing the work that most people would not want to sign up for so i know what's on your plate i pray for you all the time if there's anything that we can do you guys i want you guys to go to the fatherless generation it is on uh instagram as the father fatherless generation and i want you to not only follow but I want you to contribute because she's going to be doing this all over the world, you guys. Not Wait, just we just got our papers of the corporation in, in Johannesburg and Lusaka, Zambia. I am a business in Africa. You see, these are the, these are the people that I get to talk to. I love my life. Like, I literally love my life. Look, not to cut you off, but I, got, I, I learned the other day, I got to celebrate, but I was just saying it really passively, and I was like, you haven't celebrated that. Babe, you got to celebrate that. So we got to talk. We got to talk because we need to celebrate that. I'm incorporating <laughs> that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So I'm so yeah. proud of you. I'm so, uh, I'm ecstatic at the work that you do. I, I, I am so impressed by the, the passion that you have for kids to be reunited with their fathers because it is so vitally important in this world. And I just just thank you. And I am I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful to have you as a sister girlfriend. I'm grateful to be doing this work with you. But look, I'm glad we, we got to reconnect in this place, in this space. And um, even having dinner with you in Atlanta, and we got to have a great talk. I'm just grateful that even in this season of my life, because of my own life, I stayed away from women a little bit. I get to build my own intentional sister circle, and you're a part of that. And I'm grateful for that. I love you. How about that? I love you, too. I love you. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye, love. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God, you guys. This was for y'all. I wanted you guys to just get a glimpse of what we did this year. We, This has been a wild ride for me personally. This has been a passion of mine. I sleep, eat, and breathe, heal black joy. When I got the download, I was just like, I'm getting ready to heal some black joy. And these ladies and these gentlemen have been such an integral part of that. I cannot thank them enough. I'm so grateful to have shared the space with them. I'm thankful for you guys, my Hill Black Joy tribe, for 
riding along, for going along on this crazy journey with me. You guys tune in every Thursday. I appreciate you. I thank you. I love you. We're doing big things in 2022. Go to my, click the link in our in my bio because my website is up. My YouTube page is about to be up. Because some people don't like coming on Instagram, so they want to see it on YouTube. So all of these are going to be on it. I'm going to be on YouTube. My podcast is going to be up. I also have Hill Black Joy merch. So if you are a sweatshirt connoisseur like me, I've got a few um, <clears throat> a few things in the works for 2022. I'm doing a. Uh, a free mini course for black women called Hill Black Joy mini course. Please join in. Um, and, and it starts on this Sunday. So we're, we are starting our Hill Black Joy mini course on Sunday. So go to my website and join if you haven't joined already. It's going to be awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, guys. I've been a little under the weather today, but I said I'm going to push through. I'm so glad Larry came on. I need to have somebody who's got COVID to come on. To have somebody that just wants to rest, like Jennifer, to just just come come on. Like that is a testament to who they are as people. But what I've been trying to pour out, they they respect and they love what I'm doing as much as I respect and love what they're doing. Um, so to be able to have those people come on and be a part of it when they don't feel good. And they just want to rest because rest is our birthright, as my sister Sarah says. Um, I am elated. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I wish you nothing but blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings in 2022. Heal Black Joy. Write down what healing Black Joy for you looks like. And work on that in 2022. And if you need somebody to guide you through that, hit me up. Thank you guys. Have a good night.